Here, sadly, is where we switch away from the CLI in favor of the AWS GUI. I'll begin by navigating to the Route 53 dashboard and then selecting my thedataproject.net hosted zone. As you can see, there's already a nice collection of records, including one pointing to my Teach Yourself Data Analytics subdomain. I'm going to create a new record within this zone for our new website. I'll enter the subdomain name, my site. When you add the domain name itself, of course, it'll add up to the name of the S3 bucket. Now I'll leave the record type as A and enable the traffic routing to use alias. Clicking inside the box allows me to visually search for resources within all the relevant AWS services. I'm looking for my S3 endpoint. When I select that, a new box appears so I can narrow down my search by AWS region. As you'll remember, my bucket exists in the US East 1 region, so I'll select that. That'll open up a new S3 endpoint box. Clicking once in that box will give me all the available buckets in that region of my account. As it turns out, there's only one My Site bucket we're working with, so I'll select that. I'm happy with the routing policy and the Evaluate Health setting, so I'll just click Create Records and I'm done. Now, let me open a new tab in my browser so I can try to access the site using my Route 53 domain name. There's a bit of a delay, and then we're confronted with another security warning. When I click through, I can see that everything is there exactly where it's supposed to be. But of course, this version is also not using encryption. That's something we'll definitely need to fix. So it's back to AWS for us. But this time, we're off to the CloudFront dashboard. I'll click Create Distribution and start the ball rolling. I begin by selecting an origin domain. That means the location where my content currently exists. Once again, AWS automatically populates the field as a dropdown containing all the possible resources within my account that might be eligible. And once again, the My Site bucket is there waiting for us. This will work fine for us in this case. However, there may be cases when connections will fail using a distribution configured this way. Instead, for some reason I can't fathom, you'll sometimes want to use the S3 endpoint rather than the automatically generated syntax used in our example. Just something to keep in mind if you're troubleshooting problems. There are a lot of optional values I could mess around with here, but I'm focusing on what I'll need to build a reliable and secure distribution for my website. You should take some time to explore all those options, but be aware that the slightest deviation can have unpredictable and sometimes catastrophic results in the real world. Depending on where most of your users live, you can keep your costs down by restricting the active edge locations to particular subsets of the world. I'll go with North America. After all, which European, Asian, or African would seriously want to visit my silly little website? In any case, it'll still work for everyone else. It's just that it might be a bit slower. You want to add a CNAME value for routing. Again, this will also match the name of our S3 bucket. Now we come to the encryption certificate, which is the primary reason we're going to all the bother of creating this CloudFront distribution. If you already have an available certificate, you'd click in the field and, just as happened with our endpoint, it would magically appear. But you probably won't happen to have a certificate lying around, so you'll click the Request Certificate link instead. As it turns out, for complex reasons, I already had the certificate I'm going to use. But to show you how it works, I'll take you through the proper steps using a fake domain. The key value you'll need to enter is the same fully qualified domain name we use for our bucket and the C name just before. I'm only adding a 1 to this address because, as I said, there's already a cert waiting for me. If you're configuring a www subdomain, you could add that name to the certificate here. We won't actually get our certificate until we validate it. That can happen in one of two ways. If the DNS records for your domain are managed through Route 53, as they are in our case, then you can select DNS validation and later 
follow the prompts to create a validation file in your hosted zone. But in all cases, you can select Email Validation and you'll be sent an email with a link you can click. With the DNS Validation option selected, I'll click the Request button. You'll see that validation for our new request is still pending. Click that search link and then the Create Records in Route 53 button. Make sure your cert is selected. It's the only one in the list in this case. And then click Create Records. AWS will automatically create all necessary records for you in your Route 53 hosted zone. Once that change propagates, you can head back to CloudFront to select the cert. First though, I'll set my index.html file as the default root object. That's important. Don't miss it. Now I'll move back up and refresh the certificate list. There is my new cert. I'll select it and then create the distribution. It can take some time for the distribution to be fully deployed, so you might have to go to get a coffee and come back to check for updates. When it's finally done, you'll head back to Route 53 to edit the DNS record we created earlier. Check the box next to the A record and the record will display on the right. Click Edit Record. The value that matters right now is Route Traffic 2. We don't want visitors to go directly to our S3 Bucket website mainly because they won't get HTTPS that way, but also because they won't enjoy the performance benefits our CloudFront distribution endpoints could give them. So we'll click on Alias to CloudFront distribution instead. That'll set the AWS region and also give us a new box where we'll select our distribution. Again, thanks to AWS integration, there will generally be only one choice, the correct one here. It looks like everything succeeded. Great. Now let's head back to the website and refresh the page. Hmm. No change to the not secure status. Let me force the issue by adding HTTPS to the URL. This time we get the happy closed lock icon signifying that SSL TLS encryption is active and our connection is secure. The site configuration is complete. It may not be pretty, but we've got ourselves a highly available, secure, and simple site. Did I mention it was dirt cheap? Since we're only using a subdomain, Route 53 won't cost us a penny. And S3 and CloudFront charge by the volume of data that's requested. Depending on the size of your site objects, you could handle thousands of visitors for less than a dollar each month. The only website administration process left to address at this point is updating your content, and that will be our next stop.